What normal people here? Let's be friends. What shippers here? Let's make out. Or your place or mine. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 6, Episode 6. No second prances. Okay. It was a little cringeworthy for me at the start, but I started to enjoy it, and I was glad I wasn't spoiled by the chat room on this one. Because, oh, Trixie! Hello, Trixie! Oh, she's not talking like Trixie most of the time. <laughs> this is good to hear her not doing third-person talk all the time. I really liked the interactions and some of the jokes in this episode. Though, for me, certain things felt out of place or slightly out of character, like... Twilight slightly, but mostly Celestia at the whole party thing. Because, <laughs> you know, she's hanging out with Twilight. I don't think she'd be really bothered much by the fact that Sun... Uh, that's it. <laughs> Starlight wasn't there. She'd, be, she'd wonder, of course, and maybe worry a little bit, but she wouldn't be annoyed. Unless she was on a very tight schedule, then she would go, Sorry, Twilight, um, we'll slip another date. I have to go and take care of some other important matters. There were a lot of fun stuff in it. The lit on her actions... The more detailed spas, all the reactions from Starlight with the, it's okay, I'm not stressing out. I can make friends. Looks around, friends, 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 friends. Ah! <laughs> ah. And the little joke at the end of, how do you get your hair to do that all the time? <laughs> so, I'll probably have more good stuff to say about it along the way, but I have a feeling Ember may not have liked this episode so much. So let's hear the nitpicks. <laughs> oh, you mean the episode that um I could justifiably tie back to triple six? Because it's season six, episode six, and to say my little pony friendship is magic is six words. <laughs> Oh, I feel some interesting stuff coming along. Hmm? <laughs> okay, for starters, I can understand Twilight micromanaging Starlight's friendship lesson. Twilight has a long way to go as a teacher, and, you know, she is very OCD and very attention to detail. So, I can deal with that. But what is with the grudge against Trixie? Let's compare the tally sheets. Starlight Glimmer had a cultist enclave where she brainwashed ponies and took away their special talents. The next time that we saw her, she basically destroyed the universe with her time travel mix-ups. What did Trixie do? She gammoned Ponyville into thinking she was a better magic user than she was, and she used a dark magic pendant to temporarily enslave the town. Perspective, Twilight. <laughs> Was Trixie really that much worse than Starlight, whom you took as your student after she almost destroyed the universe? Uh, I'm just going to sit back and enjoy this bucket of popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to get a refill. <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> Completely unfair of Twilight to spoil. Bring, oh, you have to make a new friend by tomorrow night on Starlight. Friendship lessons should not be the equivalent of a pop quiz. Or really have a deadline. No, they shouldn't. And Starlight's right. Yeah, it's Ponyville, one of the friendliest places in all of Equestria. So why hasn't she made a couple friends already? I mean, she already rekindled her friendship with Sunburst. She has to be in the town, either accompanying Twilight, accompanying Spike, running her own errands, or just to get away from the castle. Or running Twilight's errands. Twilight was smart. She would have started sending her out on errands to get her to interact with people more to be able to make more friends. Because just interacting with people can sometimes help you make a friend out of coincidence. <laughs> and it would be under a low-stress situation because she wouldn't be thinking, oh, I need to make friends. Yes. But now we've put that horrible pressure of, oh, I've got to make a new friend, and I have to do it in time to bring them to dinner tomorrow night. Friendships don't exactly happen like that. You don't meet someone for two seconds and go, hey, I need to, you know, bring someone to dinner tomorrow night. Yeah, that's a sure way to get a real good and close friend is, hey, 
free dinner with the princess of the sun and the princess of friendship. <laughs> uh. If she phrased it that way, she probably would have had 20 or 30 takers. <laughs> and it probably would have been about as sincere as her taking Trixie. Mm. Even though Starlight and Trixie did have a connection. Mm-hmm whole backstory people still saying that oh you're a bad person because of your past but i've learned from my past no you haven't but i'm me i know <laughs> yes and the lovely you know cameo moments of dj pwn 3 and derpy and cranky doodle mm -hmm. ah cranky doodle he still has that nice toupee that pinky got him though <laughs> mm -hmm. oh it was much nicer than his old one i would have kept it too mm-hmm Sorry, I just remember that episode. This donkey's really bald! It was a funny moment, but not one of Pinkie Pie's best. Definitely not. And another, you know, in sad moments, the members of the main six trying to help her find a new friend. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Another part I really enjoyed. Poor Beck Macintosh. Mm-hmm. And Starlight's automatic jump to use magic whenever possible. Every one of the main six trying to help went very poorly. You know, Mrs. Cake could have been good because, you know, she's a very kind pony. She's a bit older than the main six. We don't really know how old Starlight is, but she'd be very steady, especially having twins. And a strong magic user would make a great babysitter. <laughs> mm -hmm. But Starlight was too forward with her magic and Mrs. Cake felt threatened. So well, there went that. And Rainbow Dash with the whole, yes, I know I'm not going in order, with the whole, oh, Spitfire. Wait, what do you mean you don't know who the Wonderbolts are? <laughs> okay. There are probably people who weren't trying to take over the world or enslave villages who haven't heard of the Wonderbolts. You know, not everyone is a Pegasus pony. And from what we've heard and can infer from what the Cutie Mark Crusaders have said, not all pony villages are integrated like Ponyville. Because that was one of the things they said was special about their town, was that you had Earth ponies, Pegasi, and unicorns all living together. So, yeah, bust there. And Rarity could make a dress way faster than three weeks. Also, I'm sure there would be something already on the rack that would have worked reasonably well. And none of the hats in Rarity's discount hat bin would be anything less than lovely. And Rarity would never be as so callous and... Poorly fashionable to try to force a hat on to Starlight that not only doesn't look good for her, but does not fit her properly. Especially considering that Rarity is another unicorn. She would commonly take the possession of a horn into account in her hat designs. Mm -hmm. I need to double check it, but because of the inconsistencies with the characters stuff like that, this may be a new writer to the series. Because I'm pretty sure we got quite a few of those this season, so I need to double check that in the credits. Mm -hmm. So please continue. I got plenty of popcorn left. <laughs> <laughs> Surprising. <laughs> Considering you tend to have hoof to mouth syndrome with anything you're holding in terms of food or beverage. Specifically beverages. I can't help it. It's in my hand. I will drink it. <laughs> Here, hold this for me. Why is it empty, Lux? Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> and then cut to her little picnic event with Fluttershy and the animals. She seemed to be getting on fantastically with Angel, but she passes that up as not being the type of friend that she thinks Twilight would want her to have. Twilight said, make a friend. Why does it not being a pony somehow make it less of a friend? And you made friends with Angel Bunny. Angel Bunny, who looks like he has a bit of a crush on her now. Hmm. <laughs> Just a tad. 
that would have worked out really well. So you passed up friendship because you thought Twilight wouldn't approve of it. And then you get a friend that Twilight actually doesn't approve of and you defend it. Inconsistent much, Starlight? <laughs> I'm betting there's more. <laughs> of course. Go like, we're not even close to the end of the episode yet. <laughs> No, we're not. <laughs> because we still have Trixie's stage show. But first, let's cut back to Trixie's absolute rudeness of damaging all of that silverware to make a replica of herself. I mean, it would be one thing if she merely stacked them together, but she actually bent them into shape. Rude. Especially since, if you think about it, that was probably special tableware that probably cost quite a few bits <laughs> mm -hmm. and even if it wasn't you're still messing up someone else's property inside their own home when you're trying to make nice but of course if you're only trying to make nice with starlight and you're trying to make twilight look like a prejudiced witch then you're doing pretty well <laughs> i don't think twilight needs much help in this episode <laughs> No, she doesn't. Which again, perspective, Twilight. Okay, so you had to save the town because Snips and Snails, not Trixie, Snips and Snails woke up that baby Teddy Ursa, which they only did because you, Twilight, pointed out that no one had seen Trixie beat the Ursaring. It's not Ursaring. Damn, I'm getting my series mixed up. <laughs> no one had seen Trixie defeat this creature, so how could they possibly believe it? So it was kind of your fault that they woke the creature up anyways. There's a lot of problems with that particular episode. <laughs> yes. And then, oh, let's see, the dark magic amulet. Okay, she might have put it on knowing what it was, but she couldn't necessarily have known everything it would do to her. And we make plenty of leeway for people who are under the influence of bad magical items or are just having a temporary moment of badness. Nightmare Moon, cough. Discord, <laughs> cough. <laughs> That's another perspective thing that you forgave the god of chaos, pretty much. <laughs> and the goddess of the moon who tried to bring eternal night to the world. Oh, and Starlight Glimmer who with her time travel repeat loops, was making the world progressively and progressively worse until it was basically the end of the universe. But we're gonna stay ticked off at a charlatan who took a shortcut to power using a magical object that she no longer possesses. Now let's move on to that ridiculous manticore trick. Okay, totally reasonable for Starlight to say, you use your stage magic, I'll use real magic, and then you can do the trick. There is no way she could have been set up to do that trick in time for the performance that we saw. Trixie outright admitted that she had no idea how Hoofdini did the trick and couldn't figure out a way to replicate it. So where did she scare up a manticore at such short notice? Because if it was Manny Roar, then Fluttershy shouldn't have been so freaked out. And if she had a tame manticore in her wagon, I think that would have come up sooner. Also the cannon, because that's usually not part of a stage magician's repertoire. So where did both of those things come from? And why, why would you try to perform the trick anyways when you ticked off your new friend and she ran off? You basically decided that, okay, my friend ran off, so I'm going to kill myself in front of this audience if she doesn't come back. Mm -hmm. That's a brilliant lesson. Oh, something bad happened in your life? Kill yourself over it in a very incredibly dramatic way that cannot be forgotten and show all these ungrateful ponies just how horrible they were. Yeah, that's really proving your point. It's not like they had time to add it to the program. Nobody was expecting this trick, because otherwise you wouldn't have had all the gasping. So there was absolutely no reason to perform that trick at all. Oh, 
it did lead into another one of the moments I laughed at when Trixie pops out of the box and goes, Yeah, basically, I survived. <laughs> yeah, I would be surprised too if I had set up an elaborate suicide scheme like that. Because it was basically, your friend saves you or you die. And then we have to go back a little bit to the middle, the moment where Trixie declares she's won and hurts Starlight. Mm-hmm. Lots of tears were shed. Yes. And then in that moment, after Starlight is run off, proves to Twilight that she really was sincere and repentant. And Twilight finally gets to the realization of, oh, wow, I have been a real jerk this entire episode. I need to go fix this. I love how Twilight completely forgets about Celestia. <laughs> yes. Well, Twilight was so obsessed over, I have to show my teacher what a good teacher I am. Because they could have just had the dinner without her and gone, I guess she got caught up with her new friend, let's go ahead and eat instead of letting the ice sculpture melt halfway and leaving everyone sitting at the table starving. And you brought those ponies and that donkey in under false pretenses, Twilight. That was very dishonest of you. <laughs> I don't think Vinyl Scratch slash DD Poem 3 minded much. She was just sitting there rocking out. <laughs> oh, with those headphones on, the odds are she didn't hear anything Twilight had to say anyways. <laughs> They're just going, oh, cool, Celestia. What am I doing here? I don't care. Oh, I have this thing on repeat. <laughs> All right, that's cool. <laughs> I wonder what Octavia is doing. <laughs> yes, I shipped those two. Moving on. <laughs> so, yeah. And why is everyone else just still sitting there at the table, not eating? I mean, if Celestia started serving herself, the other three would have eaten. I mean, come on, she's the princess, which is basically the queen, since in this universe the only queens around are evil. Mm -hmm. Poor Chrysalis. Or kings, for this matter. Mm -hmm. well, we, we don't have a lot of male authority figures in this series at all. Because apparently Shining Armor is not King Shining Armor, he's just Shining Armor. But we still have Princess Cadence, so... <laughs> mm -hmm. Apparently marrying into royalty doesn't automatically make you royalty. And we have Prince Blueblood, who we never see. We have King Sombra, who was defeated. We have Dragonlord Torch, who is no longer Dragonlord because now his daughter is. Mm hmm so we should probably head back to this episode. <laughs> oh, but I hadn't mentioned that the leader of the bullyish yaks was male. Mm. All wonderful points. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there was really no point for everyone to just be sitting there bored out of their minds. And I mean, obviously, none of those three were intimidated by Celestia. Otherwise, Cranky wouldn't have been able to ask that question about her mane. So if you're not intimidated and the person hosting the dinner has run off, and if you guys happen to be hungry or thirsty and there's food right there on the table in front of you, why not just go ahead with dinner instead of waiting dinner for one or two, okay, technically three additional people because Twilight would have to come back, Starlight would have to come back, and Starlight would have to come back with her actual friend as opposed to the posers that Twilight grabbed for her. So really, is Twilight after all this time so unsure of herself around Celestia that she can't let her teacher, mentor, and guide know that she's having difficulty? Whatever happened to trusting Celestia, looking to Celestia for advice? But no, now we have to cover up the truth in case Celestia thinks we aren't a good teacher. <laughs> Little hint, Twilight, you're not a very good teacher. And since Starlight has offered to be Trixie's assistant, and Trixie's show has to, by the very nature of it, travel, does that mean we get Starlight out of our hair for a while? That she's actually going to, air quotes, abandon her place as Twilight's student to go on the road with her new friend? Hmm, so many good points. And where was Spike this entire episode? He lives at the castle and he's not allowed to come to dinner? Good point. Didn't even think about that. Poor Spike. <laughs> yeah. And we never see Aloysius anymore. Where is he? Up in the rafters? <laughs> or delivering mail or something? This is not Harry Potter. <laughs> we have a dragon to send messages. Okay, I think I'm done. <laughs> I was gonna say, is there more? Guess not. Depends. Do you have popcorn left? 
A couple of curdles, really. Okay, then maybe I can find something else. <laughs> I'm thinking we should just wrap it up for these poor people. <laughs> you think anyone's still listening? <laughs> Probably one or two, and they just have it on in the background going, what, what, what they're ending? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, but if you do actually have more off the top of your head... <laughs> Not off the top of my head. If we took a break and came back to it, I'd probably have it. <laughs> oh, well then. I hope you've enjoyed Ember's rants on... Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic. Season 6, Episode 6. No Second Prances. Oh, that's what I missed. I know it was a play on No Second Chances, but prancing is more of a type of step also a can be a reference to dancing none of which has anything to do with this episode <laughs> thanks for listening if you want to be notified of new episodes please subscribe i would really enjoy that and it would encourage us to continue to do more episodes if you like my art you can find me on tumblr and deviantart if you would like to support lux's creative talent you can check out his Patreon or check the link below for commission availability.